Very exciting. President Trump today, he was on Air Force One. He declared that he will indeed announce a nominee to replace retiring Supreme Court Justice Anthony Kennedy on July 9th. Ooh, Democrats have insisted it would be illegitimate to consider any nominee until after the November midterms. And now Senator Cory Booker is offering the latest lame excuse. The president of the United States right now is a subject of an ongoing criminal investigation. I believe that this committee should uh, or can and good, should uh, do not believe that this committee should or can in good conscience consider a nominee put forward by this president until that investigation is concluded. Now, let's debate how and when the nomination process should proceed with Attorney Harmy Dillon, the RNC committee woman from California, and Democratic strategist Michael Starr Hopkins. Great to see both of you. All right, Harmy, Thanks, let's start with you here. Uh, the president actually spoke today on this subject uh, with Maria Bartiromo, and I want you to react. Let's watch. Are you going to ask your nominees beforehand how they might vote on uh, Roe versus Wade? Well, that's a big one, and probably not. They're all saying, don't do that, you don't do that, you shouldn't do that, but I'm putting conservative people on, and I'm very proud of uh, Neil Gorsuch. He has been outstanding. His opinions are, you know, so well-written, so brilliant, uh, and I'm going to try and do something like that, but I don't think I'm going to be so specific. Yeah, well, the concern, of course, on the, on the left is this is a run on Roe. This is going to eviscerate Roe. That's how you're going to get women to turn out in the midterms. They're going to be outraged. He didn't go for the litmus test, though. No, kind of, you can kind of think he almost wanted to go for it, but he didn't. <laughs> well, he didn't, and that's exactly right. You're not supposed to do that, and it's not appropriate even for a sitting judge or a candidate to say how they would vote on a specific issue because each case has to be taken on its merits. But it isn't just Roe, Laura. I just got an email from Nancy Pelosi, who's my member of Congress, with the hysteria that we're talking about rolling back LGBT rights. We're talking about Roe v. Wade. We're talking about uh, the rights of the disabled. We're talking about the rights of women. I mean, you know, it's going to be a dystopia if the president gets to appoint another Supreme Court justice. And guess what? They said all of those same things with Neil Gorsuch, and none of that happened. This is just the Democratic playbook. We see it every time. Michael, um, Senator Feinstein uh, back in uh, last year was grilling uh, Amy Coney Barrett, who is now on the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals, on her, it, it sounded like it was on her Catholicism. I want to I play mm -hmm. it in your reaction. Let's watch. When you read your speeches... Um, the conclusion one draws is that the dogma lives loudly within you. And that's of concern when you come to big issues that large numbers of people have fought for for years in this country. Well, she's the mother of several children. Uh, she's a Roman Catholic. Uh, and clearly that's what Feinstein was getting at, clearly getting at the issue of abortion. Obviously, she's confirmed. And right now, it looks like she's the number one or number two possible pick for President Trump. How's this going to go down, Mike? Listen, I know a lot of Catholics that struggle with the idea of being pro-choice. Uh, but here, I take the president at his own word. When the president appeared on Chris Matthews on MSNBC, he said that he thought that women who had abortions should be punished. And so, you know, when we talk about rolling back the protections of Roe versus Wade, that's, that's a realistic thing that could happen. And in 2018, you're talking about Justice Kennedy now resigning and a more conservative member of the court stepping up. Now, the president has already talked about loyalty pledges. And so I think that when you're talking about a Supreme Court justice who can decide issues such as whether or not a president can pardon himself, whether or not uh, a president has to comply with a subpoena, this president has put himself in that position where now Democrats have to say, we need to wait and let the will of the voters decide. Laura, Pretty garbage. much everyone on that list, though, uh, Harmeet, mm -hmm. uh, the list is long, but whether it's Tom Hardiman or whether it's Brett Kavanaugh, whether it's uh, Joan Larson or, or Amy, these are all top-notch legal minds. These are stellar acad academics and jurists. There's just no doubt about it. It's like someone opposing Kagan. Opposing Kagan was ridiculous. 
She's incredibly smart. I, I mean, I don't agree with a lot of her opinions. I, I have a great suggestion. Idea, that, but the idea of putting, of, of opposing uh, Atlanta Kagan, I thought was ridiculous no, for Republicans. Right, Obama had, a, had an opportunity to put someone on who shared his judicial philosophy, and he did. No, she's highly qualified, and we don't play the same games on our team that the other side does. But, you know, you, you, you're, the, the laws Mayor need Garland. to be made in Congress and signed by the president and then implemented by the, you know, ruled on by the courts, not made by the judges. And that's really the problem. Here. When you see Cory Booker going full Venezuela with this hysteria that, uh, you know, maybe we should just suspend the normal rules and uh, allow this frivolous complaint against the president, who's, by the way, not under criminal investigation, that's that's completely false. Um, you know, we, we can't allow that well, to disrupt well, this process how, how, like well, that. How is that false? It's, the president is not under criminal investigation. That's a lie. Uh, you we know, don't know that because well, the president uh, can't be indicted, so therefore uh, he can't be the target know, of an investigation. That's a sideshow. And by the way, if you want to play by those rules, Democrats, think about what happens when you you have the White House. Do you want frivolous complaints against cool. your president to suspend the rule that. of law? Secondly, and number two, there is a real human cost, Laura, uh, to uh, having a split on the Supreme Court where there's an open, there's a vacancy. That means a lot of cases, death penalty cases, other cases simply don't get heard because there isn't a quorum. That's literally to hear what them. Mitch McConnell and, did and, and, 18 and, months and, before and the election. We, yeah, Harmeet, and we don't Harmeet, want that to happen. Yeah, Harmeet, what Michael's getting at is look, Mitch McConnell didn't move forward for a vote on Merrick Garland. Mm -hmm. Conservatives cheered it, uh, allowed for this opening uh, to, you know, allowed obviously for Gorsuch to go on the court, and now we have another opening. So the Democrats are like, well, he kind of, he didn't play by the same old rule book, and so we're going to do, we're going to, Make up rules. I that's don't know. They're, they're, the Biden I don't know what rule. they can find. Biden rule. You act like the Biden. Sorry, you act like the Biden rule is something that's like written into law. It's something that Biden suggested when he was a senator. He said that the will of the voters should be heard, and the same thing that could be said during a presidential election can now be said during a congressional midterm election. The Actually, will of the voters no. should be decided. No, Army, because you can close it out. no, because it, it's always a congressional election. It's a congressional elections year round. That that same ruling does not apply. We had a lame duck president uh, in the last situation, and we don't have a lamed up president right now. We have a sitting president. You were president who lost the popular vote, term, so therefore he wasn't even elected by the majority. And that's not how our, co our Constitution is written. So go back and read the Constitution and then come, come back. The reality and is... Well, I got the same law degree that you got. He, so yeah, Michael, Michael, I've got to say, the, the Electoral College issue, so, that so thing has been... That argument has been raised since... I think it was, was it 1996 or 1998, 2000? I mean, people have been raising that issue of Electoral College. This has been going on. Hillary talked about it Get back the in uh, 2000. The Constitution I mean, if you don't like this, it. We're, 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 we're a representative republic, okay? We're not a pure we democracy. I just, Our framers understood we that we didn't want to be ruled by two of states. Circumstances. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but I don't Absolutely. think most people want to be ruled by California and New York. No, thank, thank you very you. much. God, right. God knows I don't. But it was a great conversation. <laughs> you're both very, you're both much smarter than I am. The law. So I'm glad to have you on. Uh,